fantastic. Hi, my name is Lennis Woods Mullins, and I am a um, holistic living and wellness expert for women over 40. I also have a podcast and a webcast. I have a wonderful wellness woman group on Facebook, and I am also an author, and I'm so excited uh, to be here tonight to talk with you about a program that Dr. Shelley Nigolo and I uh, have created. Uh, the name of the program is called the Emergence Encounter Webinar. And Shelley, is your uh, microphone on yet? Looks can like right. Yep, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, very good. Fantastic. So I went ahead and introduced myself kind of sort of. Again, my name is Linus Woods Mullins. I'm a certified holistic living and wellness expert for women over 40. Uh, I specialize in working with women over 40, but I have been working with women for all ages, almost for 12 years. And I got together with Dr. Shelley Nigolo. And Shelley, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Shelley Nigolo. I'm founder of Power of Women Seminars. And uh, I've been training women for over 30 years to create a life they love. And Linus and I came together because we saw a need to support women in these times and really being able to step out fully into their potential as people. Yes. And to emerge as whole women. Absolutely. And, you know, when we first started working on this course, it was before... COVID, before the uh, racial protest, uh, before a lot of things that are going on right now. But it was almost kind of serendipitous because the more we worked on and enhanced the program, the more we realized how much it was needed for right now. Because let's face it, while most of us as women want to put on a strong face, you know, we got this, we can do it, you know, we're strong, we've got it all together. A lot of us inside are going through a lot. Some of us are feeling occasionally maybe hopeless or frustrated. Uh, yet still others are having some fears and lots of anxiety and stress. And all of that can accumulate together to really have an impact on our bodies, on our mind, definitely our spirit. And one of my concerns as a wellness professional is that it can also impact our overall immune system. So it's so important that we take a holistic approach to our wellness, making sure that we're taking care of our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. And while I know we probably read blog, blogs, watch webinars, do all kinds of things to try to keep ourselves engaged and going, sometimes that can be just overwhelming. And what Shelly and I wanted to do was to put together a webinar of a few tips that uh, might be able to help you during this particular uh, scenario, but also something that you can kind of carry with you along your journey to wellness. And also give you a framework for stepping into what's next for your life. Absolutely. Don't we all want to have a life that we really love? We really do. Yeah. And sometimes we don't know what to do about it, especially when we have challenging circumstances. Like what we're dealing with right now. So yeah. we wanted to share with you some things and tools that we hope will be helpful. Um, I know I have used them before. Shelly has been using them for years. And I can tell you that some of the things that Shelly shares, uh, I've been using them for about uh, four months or five months maybe. And it has made a profound difference in my life. And while I'm still on the journey, I'm still working on myself. I'm a work in progress. I feel like I'm on the right track because I'm actually instituting some of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, I meant to say, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and we will take a look at those questions and answer them at the end of this presentation. Okay. So welcome to the Emergence Encounter webinar. So what does it mean to emerge as a total woman? Well, it means that you are beautiful as you are. And when I say beautiful, I'm talking about the kind of inner beauty, that lasting beauty that really never fades, no matter how old we are. And I believe that if you keep that inner beauty going, it kind of radiates out and really transcends whatever it might be going on on the outside. Because if you're feeling good about yourself on the inside, then that comes out on the outside. Also, emerging as a total woman means you have a sense of peace. Uh, you know, right now, I think that that idea of a sense of peace seems far-reaching, but 
with the tools we're talking about with you today, uh, some of these tools can help you achieve that sense of peace, that no matter what's going on around you, you're still feeling a sense of calm and not a sense of, of panic and chaos and anxiety. The other thing about emerging as a total woman is that you really accept who you are and you're comfortable with that. Uh, with me, for instance, I know I'm a work in progress. I still have things that I need to work on, but I am learning to really accept who I am right now in this moment in time. It may not be perfect, but it's good enough. And what we want for all of you is to feel that way, to accept who you are and to love yourselves right now in this moment in time as you are, as you begin to love yourself through this whole process of emergence. You wanna feel well. We feel that, you know, when you emerge as a total woman, you feel well in your mind, body, and spirit. You're taking a holistic approach to life. You're making sure that your mind is in shape and that your spirit is uplifted and your body is well. And you're doing that through different things, by what you eat, by um, how you move, uh, by the peace that you seek through different tools and holistic practices that you do and that you really are on your own to-do list. You recognize that you're a priority and as a result of all of that, you're feeling well in your mind, body, and spirit. And you are clear on your purpose. You know, when you live a life that has purpose to it, it, it has an enriched feeling. You wind up feeling satisfied with whatever you're engaged in. And so it's so important to have a purpose in your life. And we're going to start to uncover and discover what that means for you. You can also manifest what you want with ease. You no, know, we're all interested in manifesting what's next in our lives. But what does it take actually to consistently create the results that you want personally, professionally, in your personal life with your family, your relationship, your love, all your loved ones, and in your business or career or, or your job, and have a balance and ease for your life. Because learning to create with ease is so important rather than the push that we're engaged in from day to day. And you experience full self-experience, self-acceptance, uh, and self-love. That would be incredible. And you're ready to move forward and emerge. So Shelly and I have put together some tips and tools and techniques that you can try to help you emerge into that total moment. And I wanted to emphasize something. Everybody is at a different point in their lives. We're all at different points, you know. We have we might have one thing together on one end and the rest of the hot mess on the other end. But the whole idea is to hold ourselves accountable and take responsibility for our lives and begin to make those changes that are going to help us to feel better. And one of the things that I do um, as a um, holistic living and wellness coach is I specialize in working with women in particular uh, when it comes to anxiety. And the reason why I specialize in that is because I suffered from anxiety myself. For many years, over 20 years, I suffered from anxiety and I really didn't know what it was. I really thought that it was, I, I got so used to it, I began to rationalize that everybody felt that way. I would wake up in the morning and have this anxious feeling and I would feel like I was going straight downhill on a roller coaster with no restraints. I mean, it was the strangest feeling. And the only thing that seemed to really help was in the morning, my husband would bring me a cup of coffee. And that's really when I started drinking coffee, which I still drink to this day. Uh, but not because of the anxiety anymore. I'm, I'm delivered from that. But that's how I could get some kind of sense of false peace. And it wasn't until I had an epiphany in my life that I decided to really tackle those feelings and to figure out where they were coming from and how I could uh, manage it in such a way where it was not crippling because let's face it when you're dealing with a lot of anxiety a lot of anxious thoughts uh, it can be crippling it's difficult there would be times when I wouldn't want to go outside to check the mailbox because I was afraid what news might, might be in there or I would feel so much better when the sun went down because then the day was over 
and I wouldn't have to worry about anything. Crazy way to live, right? So eventually, I finally decided that I wanted to fix myself. And so the tips that I'm sharing with you are the tips that um, some of the things that I use. I have a whole lot more, but these are some of my favorite ones. And I think you'll get some results if you try some of these tips. So the first one um, that I really think is important is to take a look at what you are eating and how often. I know that sounds crazy. What does eating have to do with anxiety? But you'd be surprised. Uh, some of the things that we might eat can exacerbate those feelings of anxiety. Like for instance, um, uh, processed foods have chemicals in it that can set off or cause even more of an imbalance if your anxiety is a result of some kind of chemical imbalance. And it can exacerbate the symptoms. Also coffee, my favorite thing, that would uh, help give me a lift up later on would be one of the main reasons why I would be feeling anxious later on in the day. So take a look at what you're eating and at how it might be impacting how you're feeling. Uh, many times if it's got a lot of chemicals in it, sugar, lots of caffeine, that can exacerbate the symptoms that you're feeling when it comes to being anxious and uh, worried all the time. Also, take a look at what supplements you're taking, or are you taking any supplements? Do you know what your body needs? Sometimes the anxious feelings that you are uh, having could be the re result of a thyroid that's not functioning properly. Believe it or not, if you happen to be premenopausal or menopausal, or even postmenopausal, your thyroid could be off just a tad and it can cause symptoms of anxiety. Many times, women suffer from menopausal anxiety and they don't even know it. Doctors don't even necessarily bring it up. But when you're having those symptoms and you know you're on your way to menopause, that could be a possibility and you wanna check your thyroid health because your thyroid health is extremely important when it comes to emitting the hormones that you need to have to keep you balanced. And that anxiety is, could be a symptom of um, unbalanced uh, hormones caused by a thyroid is either hypoactive or hyperactive. So it's a good rule of thumb to get your thyroid checked, especially after 40, just to see how you're doing. Sometimes uh, the anxiety can come as a result of not having enough SAM-E in your system. A lot of people don't know about SAM-E, but everyone has it, both men and women. And for women in particular, after the age of 20 um, or 22 or so, the SAM-E is not produced um, as much as what we might need for our brain. Some women aren't impacted by it, some are. Most women who are beginning to feel it as they move into their, you know, menopausal years, premenopausal, around 40, 42 or so, they can really feel it. And that SAM-E is produced by the brain, but interestingly enough, you cannot get it from your food. The only way you can get it is through a supplement. Now, the interesting part about this is that the supplement does not require a prescription from a doctor. You can get it at the store. I started taking SAM-E after a friend of mine who happened to be a doctor told me about it because she was suffering from anxiety and her professor at her medical school told her she lived in Seattle. And the reason why she was suffering from, this, uh, from the anxiety and some depression was that she had sad which is a, um, a disorder that happens as a result of not getting enough sunlight. That's why when you're feeling a little anxious, getting out into the sun can be very good for you. But also, it, when you're getting a little anxious and you get in the sun and you're feeling better, that could be a symptom letting you know that perhaps you are low on SAM-E. So she started taking SAM-E and she said it just changed her life totally. And that was years ago. And she still takes SAMe. I take SAMe, and I can feel the difference when I don't take it. So it could have possibly aid you with um, symptoms of anxiety. Another thing is take a look at how much rest you are getting. Are you really sleeping? Are you achieving the deepest level of sleep? If you are not, that means your body's not shutting all the way down. And that cortisol that needs to shut down, that is admitted during stress, is still running throughout your body, wrecking havoc, you're not able to calm down, and there's so many reasons why you want to shut all the way down, because you don't want that cortisol running through your, um, your system. Uh, the main reason is because cortisol is ultimately what thickens you. 
And we'll talk more about that as we move on. But you want to make sure you're getting a deep, deep sleep so your body can shut all the way down. Cortisol levels can go down. Your body can repair itself. It can do, go through the full metabolism. Um, you know, you can gain weight by not sleeping, believe it or not. It's absolutely true. Another reason why you want to make sure you have a good night's sleep. And you want to take a look at your mind-body practices. In other words, how are you moving? Or are you moving at all? Do you have an exercise regime? It's really important to exercise, not because of just losing weight. In fact, the best way to lose weight is not just exercise. The best way to lose weight is what you put in your mouth. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But you wanna make sure you're moving, whatever that is, whether it's walking or perhaps you are a swimmer or you go bowling or you like to dance, whatever it is, you must have a movement regime because you wanna get those feel good hormones going. Those feel good hormones can help counteract the feelings of anxiety. That's why it's so important. Also, are you meditating? Are you spending some quiet time to kind of lower those racing thoughts? Sometimes you just need to just be. And Dr. Shelley is going to be talking with you more about that and the importance of slowing down. Are you being mindful? There's nothing worse to increase your anxiety than to keep remunerating the issues of the past or to worry about the future, tomorrow, which never comes. It's the most frustrating experience in the world to be all over the place in your head and not be present. Being present, like for instance, listening to what I'm saying right now and focusing on my words and what we're doing here is not only going to give you more out of this particular webinar, but it does take you away from some of those anxious, rushing thoughts. Now, I thought I would give you something else uh, to think about in terms of, of um, anxiety. Remember I talked about movement. And at first I was going to record myself doing it, but I said, no, I think I'm just gonna do these graphics and um, you can see me at another time where I take you through the full um, movement. But yoga moves to reduce anxiety are so key. Here are some poses that I do when I still feel anxious. Um, I would say that 97% of the time I am not anxious. But whenever I start to feel a little anxious, I do these poses. Now, I do a yoga asana in the morning, but some people might do them in the evening or in the afternoon, whatever works for you. But they do have a way of moving energy through your body and getting your hormones going, those happy hormones, because it's movement. Now, this first one is called a... Um, a cow, um, see, no, this is a cat pose, a cat pose. And the cat pose is really good because it does help to uh, relax you. It helps, especially after a stressful day, or if you wake up in the morning and you're feeling a little stressed, doing a cat pose and getting your back in that way can go a long way to helping you with your anxious thoughts. The other one is the, the cow pose, and that is good for um, if you're in a low mood or you're feeling anxious, it can be really useful in connecting your breath and to helping you feel calmer. Another one you want, might wanna try is this leg up on the wall pose. It's a very powerful pose because it can help you to regain calm, especially after a busy day. I can remember when I used to work in corporate America and I had my own office, I shut the door and do my legs up on the wall pose after a difficult meeting. And it really did make a difference. Thankfully, nobody walked in on me. <laughs> At least, I don't think they did. My eyes were closed. But um, it worked for me. Also, the child pose. Now, this may not be as good for people who might have some problems with the knees. But if you don't have any knee problems, the child po uh, pose is wonderful because it provides a sense of calm and stability, which is really ideal if you have anxiety that is impacting your sleep. I like to do the child pose sometimes at night before I go to bed. It totally relaxes me. And it also opens up those hip reflexors which sometimes get tight after the day. And when you're tossing and turning at night, sometimes it's because you haven't relaxed, relaxed those hip reflexors. So it's a good move to do before you go to sleep. Another yoga move could be something called the fish pose. You lie on your back and then you arch it. And it really does help with pent up emotions. It opens up your heart chakra and that opens up that heart area and it helps to build confidence. And they say it can grow you emotionally, especially if you're going through any particular problems that you're expecting during the course of your day. You know, you do your fish pose and you just feel like you're ready to tackle the day. The bridge pose, which is 
uh, the one with the lady uh, lying on her back, the one right after the fish pose, is, again, it opens up that space around the heart, uh, allows more space for you to focus and to think more clearly. One thing about yoga poses and yoga in general, you're focused on the breathing, you're focused on the mood, and after a while, you're not focusing on those racing anxious thoughts. That's another reason why it's so impactful. Plus, it gets the blood rushing to all of your organs, including your brain, which really needs that extra blood for nourishment. And it can help the brain basically help you think more clearly. Uh, the other pose on the far, uh, it's the far left side is called the extended triangle pose. And this also helps to alleviate anxiety and depression. And it's a good posture that can better help you cope with life when things really get tough. This particular pose, it looks um, harder than it really is and it can really bring you some comfort. And the last one I wanted to share with you um, is something like a downward dog pose. It's called the dolphin pose. This one might be a little bit harder for some people, but you do it like a downward dog, but instead of holding your arms straight, you hold them on, you hold your body on your forearms. And this is a wonderful pose. It's very relaxing. Again, the blood goes to the head, rejuvenates the brain. You'll find a lot of yoga moves have things that have you in different positions and the blood flowing to the head. The different positions is to get you to focus on the positions and the breathing and not your racing thoughts. The, uh, uh, the other positions with the head going down is to get the blood flow circulating so that you can think more clearly. Yoga is a great way to, re to relieve anxiety. Uh, but all of these poses, and I can show this to you at another time, can be modified depending on your ability to do them. But there's definitely something I think you should consider if you're looking at um, holistic ways to reduce anxiety. And Linus spoke earlier about reducing stress. And one of the things that I love to teach the ladies that come to me, and I've been teaching this particular technique for many, many years, and that is learning how to slow down. Slowing down is so important. You know, very often we think we're as good as our to-do lists that if we don't get all of the things done on the to-do list, we haven't had a really good day. And what's missing on our to-do list? Ourselves. So learning to slow down, actually you'll become more clear with what you want to have your day be like or what you want to manifest. You'll become way more focused and you'll also create a sense of harmony, both for yourself and in your surroundings with the people around you. And also, you'll be able to produce more results without pushing yourself. What an incredible thing. Because when you push yourself, you are at the effect of your circumstances of the things you have to get done. You're trying to control an outcome that's really not controllable. And when you slow down, you'll be able to produce so many more results with great ease, actually without the push. So what we're gonna do now is a very specific breath exercise or breathing exercise that you can use at any time in the day. And very simply, be sure that you're in a quiet space where there are no interruptions, no children, no animals, no music in the background for now. And be sure the door is closed so no one is interrupting you. And sit in a chair with your feet flat on the ground and your arms and hands in your lap, so your body is open. You're not crossing your legs at all or holding your hands. And let me demonstrate it first, and then what I'd like for you to do is close your eyes so you can really feel how it feels when you're breathing and starting to let go. So very simply, you're breathing through your mouth, 
And for those of you who have practiced other breathing techniques, that's fine. Put them aside for now. Because what this does, it simply brings more oxygen into your body. And it's a very deep releasing and opening up the body with your breath. So taking a deep breath through your mouth as deeply as you can. And then releasing your exhale like you're sighing. And if you have a tendency to push your breath out, which is what most of us do in the beginning, simply make a sighing sound like this. Ah, and that will help you to release the breath in a relaxed manner. So you're taking your inhale again and breathing your exhale out like a sigh. And keep the breath connected one to another. So now closing your eyes and let's breathe for just a couple of minutes and allow your body to let go. Let go of the muscles, let go of the day. Relax your thinking as you breathe. and continuing to keep your eyes closed, returning your breath back to its normal state and feel how it feels inside.
And when you're ready, opening your eyes, coming back into your room. And how does it feel? You know, whenever I do that, uh, first of all, I feel more focused. The colors are more brilliant. I feel um, calmer. I've slowed down. But I also feel, even though I've slowed down, I feel energized as well. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great feeling. It really is. Yes, it's very true. Not only does it slow you down, but it does help to increase your energy, helps to increase your focus and your concentration, your ability to manifest, uh, helps for you to accomplish more. Uh, and it helps you not only to slow down, but to feel really good in your skin with your innate power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. I, I, can, I connect more with my intuition when I do that exercise. That's well, I, call, exactly I call right. it the Holy Spirit, some people with intuition, subconscious, whatever you want to call it. I connect more. I've had more downloads as a result of doing this exercise. And you're speaking about creative ideas. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the creative ideas become absolutely increase. And, you know, you get to say, because as you slow down, you just take it as, you know, as you want to. But remember to not push. The other thing I want to remind everyone of is that, again, you can do this exercise during the day. Let's say you're going from one meeting to another or one phone call to another or one event to another that you can take a couple of minutes before you go into whatever it is you're going to be doing next and simply breathe for a couple of minutes. And you also, in the beginning of the day or the end of the day, or if you have time during the day, take five minutes or even 15 minutes to slow yourself down. The more you practice this, the more it will become a part of your everyday life. And again, you'll accomplish so much more. It will be with ease. You'll feel really more satisfied you'll have way more clarity in what you are manifesting. And speaking of which, let's talk a little bit about, um, it's not moving. Uh, oh yeah, you did mention that about it, acquiring your unpredictable thinking and feeling more balanced. And Absolutely. how you use that on a daily basis. I definitely use it on a daily basis. It's part of my morning regime. But you, meant it, you mentioned about manifestation. Yes, manifesting is very important. And breath is a crucial piece to manifesting. Because the body, if the body isn't open, if you're not open with you know, your connection with your innate power, how are you going to manifest with ease? Then you're always kind of pushing against that place where you're holding and you really want to accomplish what you really want to accomplish with great satisfaction. You know, we can get things done in spite of ourselves and you and I are certainly demonstrations of that in our past history. But by itself doesn't really give you any satisfaction. So learning how to manifest Slowing down, first of all, is very important. Breathing, most important, is essential. And focusing on a specific outcome that you really want to have happen in your life. Be as specific as possible. So if you're, you're manifesting a new car, be sure you include the hubcaps. Mm -hmm. Or if you're creating a relationship, be sure that you're you know, manifesting every aspect of that relationship with a great connection with that person, a lot of luck, uh, great listening and understanding and a, ability to create together in life or whatever it is you want to have for your relationship. And I'll tell you, if you truly practice this and make sure 
that you take harmonious action with everything that you create, you will produce those results. And you also, very importantly, and I don't think it's written down here, you got to learn how to get out of your own way. <laughs> because, you know, we hold ourselves back. We have ideas about the things that limit us and what we're capable of doing. And those things, those, those limiting ideas and beliefs and whatever blocks, whatever limitations we might have, they have to be released. In fact, they must be released so we can create with great ease. We can manifest a life that we truly love. So it's a practice thing doesn't happen immediately. I mean, you certainly can get results right away, but it must be practiced over a period of time so that it becomes like moving your arm and feeling comfortable in stepping into that unknown place with your life and saying, I'm going to find a way to create what I really want to have. I want to manifest, you know, incredible results for my life, for my relationship, for my family, you know, for my business, for my career, whatever it might be. Because manifesting is limitless. You can create anything you want if you choose. So, once you have manifested what it is you want, be sure to feel it in your body. I mentioned earlier to take harmonious action. The feeling, there's a tactile feeling in the body when you're manifesting. Manifesting includes all of your senses, physical, mental, emotional, the whole experience of the human being. And so when you have created an image you've manifested a particular image, you feel how it feels on the inside, there's a certain feeling to it, then as you start to take action, the actions have a certain feeling as well. And do the actions actually resonate with the original image of manifesting that you have put into motion. And if it is, if it does feel like it's harmonious, keep going. If as you're going down the road, it doesn't feel harmonious, then take a look and see if it's really working. If it's not, you don't have to continue down that road. You can go to the right or to the left or up or down or whatever it might be. You can change your course a bit. But keep going. Just because something doesn't work doesn't mean it's not going to. And I can tell you, having taught women for all the years that I have in the early days, I had no idea what I was doing with it. I had an experience of change, started to tell women about it. And some things worked, some things didn't work. Certainly, what I teach today does not look anything like what I began with many years ago. And I'm sure Linus could say the same thing about her work. So you have to have determination and courage to take the steps and not let anything hold you back, no matter what your resistance might be, so what? No matter what your fears might be, so what? It doesn't really mean anything. You can manifest anything that you choose. Linus, I know you have something to say about that. Because oh, I was invited. Yeah, you know, well, I was just going to say that um, um, I have manifested quite a bit since I've been using this process, and it has truly been amazing. And I think the thing that is the biggest challenge um, when you're manifesting is letting go of those blocks and limitations. Uh, sometimes well, some people might call it the, the monkey mind, the things that we tell ourselves that keep us from moving forward and keep us from, you know, really living a life that we uh, love, a life that we've dreamed about, because sometimes we want to know how the end's going to be. Well, this is what I'm manifesting, but how is it going to happen? 
When is it going to happen? All those things. And you have to learn to let go of that. And it's not like you're not doing something towards it, but you're doing something towards it without necessarily being vested in the outcome. It's kind of like whatever the universe brings you. I feel that being obedient to that inner voice that you hear as you're going to breathing exercises and you start connecting more uh, with your body, your mind, and your spirit, and being obedient to that will always lead you to something positive and good. It may not be exactly what you think it's going to be, but many times it's even better than that. And there's always that thing that, you know, uh, you don't listen to that voice, you don't do it, and then you're dealing with the what ifs. What, what if I had done this? What if I had done that? And there's nothing worse than having a big old suitcase full of what ifs. It's so much more fun to have um, a suitcase full of postcards where all the places that you, all the, the ifs that you pursued, you know, oh, I remember this time I did this or I did that, you know, instead of saying, oh, no, I can't do this, I can't do that. Uh, guarding your words and actions, the things that you say to yourself, how you talk to yourself, your self-talk is a key component to manifestation. You know, they say uh, that the um, power is in the tongue in terms of the words that we speak and also our thoughts are very powerful as well. But we can let those thoughts go and continue to visualize and think about and speak out what it is that we're doing. And there are other exercises too that I know Dr. Shelley does that can really help you move past those blocks and limitations and manifest whatever it is that you want. I know I'm do I've done it, I'm doing it. So this is something you should really make note of. And one of the things you mentioned, Linus, it's very important also to mention that we don't have written down in some of these key points is that there is a difference between creative thought and what Linus calls the monkey mind. And so learning to differentiate that so you're not stuck in that what I call the idle chatter in the background or the monkey mind mm -hmm. keeps you from really creating what you want when you listen to it and think it's real. You know, it's real thoughts, but it's only in the form of energy. It doesn't really mean anything. Versus creative thinking is most important when you're manifesting what you want in your life. So the more you slow down, the more clear and focused you become, the greater ability that you are able to uh, step into uh, to manifest a life of your dreams. Absolutely. Yeah. Now we're going to kind of make a shift and go to another tip we have in uh, helping you deal with um, the chaos, confusion, and the COVID. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the dropping those COVID pounds and itches. Now, there are a whole slew of tips and tools and techniques that I can give you, but I decided to focus on those things that don't necessarily have to do with actual dieting. These have to do with maybe some lifestyle changes that you can make. And what happened with the COVID, it came so sudden. I mean, one minute we're driving to work every day and going through the hustle and bustle and stress of our lives. The next minute we're being told, ah, you need to shut it down and stay home. Something that has probably never happened in our lives. And so we did the best we could. We dealt with it the best that we could. And one thing that happens a lot of times when we're in very stressful, uncharted territory, we either eat a whole lot or don't eat at all. Most people fall in the first category, which is where I exactly fall. So we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do to reduce those pounds and inches. Some of this is commonsensical. You kind of already know it, but you may not be doing it. And you can take one or two of these or take all of them but you will get results. So you want to establish some new habits. I know that some of you, uh, probably the new, the old new habit was, well, I'm home, we're going to order pizza, pizza for everybody, pizza, soda, you know, ice cream sundae, whatever it is to, you know, to help you feel good, to help you feel better. That's understandable. We've all been there. I definitely did it. In fact, I could smell it. Seriously, I could smell it. my husband's cooking a pizza right now. <laughs> <laughs> he did not know I was doing this. I'm like, he just outed me right now. But it's a different kind of pizza because here's the deal. You can have those pizzas if you want to or those burritos. You know, I know you guys love burritos, for instance. You know, you're putting in uh, all the different stuff that you put in burrito and, and salami on your pizza and cheese in your burrito and oh, it's so good and all that stuff. That's, you know, tastes great. The problem is 
that right after that, right, if Chris leaves, you know, maybe around, you know, lunchtime, you know, there's nowhere to go, right? Because you're sheltering in place or you're feeling full and don't want to do any, don't want to go anywhere and don't have to, you're not even going back to work, literally. You may be sliding back over to the other side of the table and starting your computer. So there's no movement going on. And before you know it, things start adding up because in the course of our lives, at least we're walking to our car, driving, maybe stopping off, getting gas, getting back in the car, driving, going to work, climbing the stairs, going up the elevator, walking down the hall to our cubicle or to our office, going to a meeting, walking to lunch. We're moving a little bit. Well, when you're sheltering in place at home during the COVID time, you could be literally sliding in your chair from one end of the table where your computer is to the other table where the food is, slide over here, wash the dishes, go back to where you know, you're sliding around, but you're not moving anywhere, okay? So that's what happens. So if you're still sheltering in place, but even if you're not, you can establish some new habits and still eat some of those foods that you really like. So instead of being the regular pizza, why don't you try cauliflower as your base for your pizza? Google it, you can do cauliflower um, uh, pizzas. The crust is made out of cauliflower, so much better for you, almost zero um, uh, calories, and it really is very, very tasty. You can put on there fresh tomato sauce, you put a few tomatoes in the um, blender, and blend up the tomatoes, throw them on there with bell pepper, a little parsley, maybe you want a little cilantro in there to get a little kick or some basil and zucchini, whatever, some chopped up garlic and maybe some Parmesan cheese, put it in the oven, boom, there you go. And that is probably a, shoot, maybe um, at least half, more than half of the calories that you would have consumed from a takeout pizza. Plus you made it, you're moving around while you're making it, and it's so much better for you, lower in cholesterol, much lower in fat. And you know, with tomato sauce that you drop in the um, blender, that's so much better than getting the pizza sauce stuff because that's full of sodium. Now you've got fresh tomato sauce that you have on your pizza that you made yourself. You know what's in it. I mean, let's face it, we open the bottle, it looks good, but what's really in there? The rule of thumb is, is that if you're going to buy something that's packaged, if it has more than five ingredients on it, put it back on the show. Don't get it. It's got so much stuff in there that it's not going to probably ultimately serve you. It's empty calories. Uh, another thing you want to think about, and that's one way to establish new habits. Um, the other thing you want to think about is, you know, taking opportunities to switch out other foods that you know that you've been eating that aren't as healthy. Like, for instance, you're eating potato chips and you love potato chips and yum, 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 yum. Well, now we're doing, it's a new day, so instead we're going to do kale chips, okay? Kale, you can get the kale in the bag, it's chopped up, you put a little olive oil on it, throw a little get garlic powder on there, maybe some sea salt, or not sea salt, but Himalayan salt, because Himalayan salt has iron in it, and we all need more iron in most cases. Put it in the oven, let it bake for a while, take it out, and you've got kale chips, they're delicious. The only disclaimer I would say about that is if you're on any kind of blood thinning um, medication, and you can't do kale chips. If you're not sure, ask your doctor. But other than that, they are a really tasty snack. And man, there's no comparison between the calories of kale chips and potato chips. You also want to keep a diet and weight journal. Now, for those of you who are still at home, you think you're bored, well, here you go. Here's something to do right here. Start writing in the journal what you're eating. It's amazing how you get those aha moments as you write down in your journal that you had fried chicken, baked beans, macaroni and cheese, and canned green beans, and a milkshake. <laughs> okay, that's the reason why you're taking the weight. You're wondering, why am I picking up all this weight? I don't understand. But if you write it down, you begin to think, wow, it's an eye opener. It's an eye opener. And it, you're holding yourself accountable. You're beginning to establish new ways of eating. So tracking that also gives you a sense of accomplishment as all of a sudden that fried chicken becomes baked chicken and you know that milkshake becomes a little bit of yogurt sprinkled with, with uh, blueberries and that those baked beans ends up being some steamed red potatoes you know <laughs> it's totally different so keep a journal and write down what you're eating also sleep i can't tell you enough how important it is that you sleep um we are a nation of non-breeders we don't breathe enough and you don't sleep enough. And sleep is when you give your body a chance to break all the way down and to be able to repair itself and to metabolize your food. You can really lose weight in your sleep. So sleep. 
Also, don't skip breakfast. It's so important. It's the first meal of the day. You don't have to have the sad breakfast, which is 2,500 calories or something like that. You don't have to have the grits and potatoes and pancakes and eggs. And, you know, every once in a while, maybe, maybe, I can't even imagine, but not all the time. Instead, you know, maybe a little avocado toast if you're into that, or maybe a little bit of sourdough toast with a little bit of almond butter, or perhaps a boiled egg. I, I love bald, I love a, a boiled egg with some bean sprouts and avocado and um, tomato, a little salad on the side. I know it might sound gross to somebody else, but it's very low calories. The uh, boiled egg, which is a, really a complete protein, it fills you up. For those of you who are high in cholesterol, maybe you might want to do uh, a, to a little bit of uh, tofu, seared tofu, um, and a little bit of coconut oil with a little bit of Himalayan salt. There's so many other substitutes of things you can eat for breakfast besides the traditional American breakfast. Uh, so, you know, Google and find Google healthy breakfast and see what you can find and begin to eat the breakfast. Don't skip it and jumpstart your metabolism. You'll find that it will carry you through the day and maybe you won't eat that huge milkshake, fried chicken, and baked potato, and beans, and all that other kind of stuff, because you have breakfast instead. Walk and talk. A lot of us are at home still, on the phone, sitting there, watching Netflix, eating chips, and just sitting. Okay. Get up. Walk around the house. Walk in the backyard. Walk and talk while you're doing the uh, laundry. Walk and talk while you're feeding the dog, while you're walking the dog, all of that. Sometimes when you're talking, and walking at the same time, you lose track of how far you've gone. And that's a great thing because you're trying to increase your movement. But just sitting and talking is really danger, Will Robinson. You don't want to do that. Once again, you're being sedentary. Get up and talk and walk. Make sure you plan your meals. Planning your meals are so important because that way, first of all, it can save you some money because you know exactly what you're going to get when you go to the store. You've planned your meals, you made your shopping list. But not only that, you can plan to be healthy. You can research your foods. You can decide what you're going to eat each day. And when you're planning it, uh, you also can plan when you're going to eat it. Eating the same time every day really helps with your metabolism system. If you're eating sporadically, thinking you're losing weight, what happens is your brain after a while, uh, when you're not introducing food uh, and they're expecting it for you to introduce food, when you finally do eat something, they're like, oh, great, fat calorie stuff. Let me hold on to it because I don't know when she's going to feed me again. I don't trust her because, you know, one minute she's eating breakfast, next minute she's not. I don't know what's going on. So the next time you eat, it grabs onto those calories, just hold on to it because they don't know when you're going to feed it again. That's how you can end up gaining weight. So eat the same time every day and eat regularly three meals a day if you can, plus two additional snacking meals. You also want to drink plenty of water. My rule of thumb personally is to do at least three 16 ounces of water a day, sometimes four. Um, I've heard other people talk about eating half your body weight, but that really scares me for people who might be like 250, 300, a whole lot of water. But, you know, don't let yourself get thirsty at home. A lot of times because we're drinking other things like coffee and soda and tea and all this other stuff, and we think, well, we're not thirsty, but your body needs to stay hydrated with water. Your brain is more than 90% water. That's why when you drink some water, you feel smarter. It's because your brain needs that water. So drink plenty of water. It keeps your metabolism going, and it also helps to rid yourself of toxins. You want to make sure that you find a fun home workout. There's all kinds of them on YouTube. I was so excited the other day when I found a workout that reminded me of my old dad's days. They were doing isolation movements, you know, when you do the hips and the, all the front and all that kind of stuff. I was just like, oh yeah, let's go, let's go. You know, it was a lot of fun and I was moving. So look on YouTube and find, you know, something, maybe you used to rumba or maybe you love Zumba or maybe you like ballroom dancing, whatever it is. Look it up on YouTube, grab one of the people that you're living with that you're stuck with at home and have them do it with you or call your girlfriend, put her on FaceTime right there and you guys do it together. And even after you return back, continue doing these things. The things I'm suggesting are things to help you remove the COVID pounds, but you can certainly do it after you start, after you start going outside the home. Make sure you're staying busy to avoid emotional eating. Busy hands, if you're busy doing stuff, then you don't have time to do this, okay? So whatever it is that you can do to stay busy, do that because it goes a long way to helping curb uh, your appetite for 
uh, emotional eating. Also, you want to be careful about um, the portion control, um, how much you're putting on your plate. I like to use a small dinner plate and then put just enough on that dinner plate. I don't mean, you know, pile it up that way. That defeats the purpose. You know, take the dinner plate. And they say, studies have shown, that if one day you're working on small portions, the next day you automatically serve yourself smaller portions. You're training, retraining the brain to expect it to, for you to eat smaller portions. And this is an excellent way. It's an old fashioned way, but it's an excellent lasting way. Remember when you're making lifestyle changes, the weight that you're trying to lose stays off. When you go on these diets for like 21 days or 30 or whatever, you might lose the weight, you might, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna come back because you haven't changed that thing in your life that caused the weight gain in the first place. Make sure you're eating mindfully. Get rid of the TV, you know, the iPad, the cell phone, even the book, the telephone, whatever, and just sit there and eat. And what a concept, have a conversation maybe with your significant other or the kids if they're there with you, uh, rather than, you know, eating. Um, you know, you're, once again, you're not eating mindfully, you're not aware, your, your body, your brain is not recording the food that you're eating as much. And that's why sometimes you eat a whole plate of something, gobble it down, you're ravenous, right? And then an hour later, you're hungry again, whereas you're not really hungry, you just didn't eat mindfully, you weren't present. So your body didn't get a chance to really um, enjoy the taste and the feel and the smell of the food. When you make it a total experience, then the body takes, you know, begins to realize, that, oh, I'm eating, and you feel a lot more full within a shorter period of time and for a longer period of time. You wanna make sure you're eating high fiber, high protein snacks. Um, you know, not the potato chip snacks, no. Uh, grab an apple. Uh, great high fiber is, well, any fruit, but oranges or those little um, mandarin oranges. You can pull, peel real fast and, you know, pop in your mouth. Cherries, grapes. Yes, they can be a little high in sugar, so you wanna be careful about that. So they're an excellent source of fiber and protein. Oh gosh, there's you can get those sesame sticks that have the protein chia seeds on them. Chia seed is a great way to get protein. You can add your chia seed to your yogurt or chia seed to your smoothie. The main thing is, and, and you know this, you can research it with the high fiber, high protein, is to put that on your list to make sure that you are increasing your fiber. Protein helps to build muscle. So if you're trying to lose the weight and you're also exercising too, it's a double whammy for you because it's going to help fill you up that much more quickly, but it's also going to help you build muscle. Stop eating when you are full. That sounds like an obvious thing. Well, of course I'm going to stop eating when I'm full. But now if you're doing emotional eating or if you're doing that hand to mouth eating, you're not really thinking about it. Think about it. After you finish eating and 20 minutes later, you're feeling hungry. Are you really, when you walk back to that, you know, um, to the kitchen, you open the refrigerator, look in, close it, you open the cabinet, close it. You're not really hungry. The reason why you can't find anything that you want to eat is because you're not really hungry. But something is telling you you want to eat because maybe that anxiety is coming in a little stress, you're trying to drown out the thoughts. Find something else to do. Go for a walk or do what I do. I know it sounds silly, but I do do this. I open the refrigerator a couple of times, I realize I'm not hungry, I do 10 push-ups and all of a sudden it goes away. That's how I try to get my arms back in shape. Do, do push-ups, um, do uh, jumping jacks, you know, do um, you know, squats, whatever. Do something else because actually all you're doing is trying to figure out a way to get rid of the stress. And there's nothing better than movement to get rid of that feeling like you need to do something with your hands. And, well, just got through saying, make sure you're staying active all the time. It's important to stay active. That also can help you curb your appetite. So it's really important to celebrate and acknowledge yourself. How many of us really stop, stop to do that? I don't mean just going out to take care of your hair and your nails, you know? But acknowledging all the little things in your life, start there. You know, even if you're up against difficult times and difficult circumstances, Personally, you know, what are the things that you can look around and say, you know, I have a roof over my head. There's food in the refrigerator. 
you know, I love my family, I love my children, I love my husband or my partner or whoever it might be. You know, and start to notice, observe all the details of your life and begin to appreciate. Linus calls it gratitude, and I do too. Be grateful for the incredible details of your life that really are so wonderful for you. Yes. And also, not only to acknowledge yourself, but to acknowledge others. You know, that's how you express your love fully. I've made it a mission of mine over the years to acknowledge people, to find something good in them that I can acknowledge them for, no matter what it might be. Even if you don't feel so comfortable with someone, you can find something to acknowledge them for. Absolutely. Because, you know, we're all in the same boat as people. And of course, you're going to resonate with some people more than others. But starting to acknowledge yourself, acknowledging the aspects of your life that really are wonderful for you and the people in your life that you love and that love you, that really brings you an experience of satisfaction and richness. Because so many times when we're manifesting something, we're in the middle of creating some result, you know, we think that when we reach the goal down the road, that, that we're as good as that goal. Or once we get the goal, we're running off to, you know, to do whatever the next thing is. So, you know, where's the satisfaction? And the thing that we miss is you bring the satisfaction to whatever you're manifesting, to your relationships, to the things in your life that you appreciate. Don't wait to get the satisfaction from something. You bring it to the party. Absolutely. Find an entirely different experience for your life. You'll have deep satisfaction that you didn't even know was available to you. And, you know, the other thing that's important about celebrating and acknowledging you is that it really does help to add to the whole idea of manifestation, like Shelley said. Um, you find that you manifest more when you start with the basics, loving yourself more, learning to love yourself, appreciating yourself for who you are, and realizing that you truly are unique, an awesome individual, an awesome individual and enough. Also... What can you do to begin to appreciate everything in your life? Begin, as she said, to take note, to look around you, to really begin to process and appreciate those things. Because remember, what you think about, what you ponder on, multiplies. So if you are focusing on manifestation, and part of your manifestation is that you want to, you know, add another zero to the end of your income. You want to go from six figures to seven figures. Well, then you begin to start being appreciative of what your bank account balance is right now, even if it's not even anywhere near seven or even anywhere near six figures in there. Appreciate it and look at that and say, you know, I, it may not be exactly what I want, but I do appreciate that. And that's true for anything in your life. You want a, a better relationship. Well, appreciate the person that you want the better relationship with as they are right now. You know, and say, I pre find the good things, find the things to be grateful for and thankful for and focus on that in your life. And as you are doing that, the manifestation comes much more quickly, but especially when you're making sure that you are celebrating and acknowledging yourself. So one of the things you can do to begin is actually start to keep a journal if you choose. Yes. Write it down. You know, look at all the details of your life and then look at it, you know, at the end of the day. Wow, look at all I've accomplished. Look at all the things that I love and, you know, the people that love me and the ones that I love so dearly and so on and so on. You know, things about yourself that you love, your qualities, the things that are really precious specifically to you. You wanna make sure 
that you make yourself a priority. Because the reality is you are the only one that you have in terms of really understanding you and how you're rigged and the whole of who you are. No one knows you better than you. And you know what's important to you. You know what's, what things that you want to achieve, what goals and objectives that you have. You may have shared that with your significant other or your bestie, but some of those other things that you don't necessarily talk to anyone about, you know that. No one else does. So make yourself a priority as you go about trying to achieve those things because your life is precious. I think that we realize probably now more so than any time in our lives how precious life is, but more specifically, how precious your life is. And because it is so precious, you want to give yourself every opportunity of having the best self-care and really pursuing a life of your dreams, a life that you've always wanted to pursue, instead of putting it off and saying, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do that. Because you want to be effective in supporting the people around you. It's hard to support people around you if you're feeling drained, worn out, unappreciated, frustrated, and upset. Instead, flip the script. You don't have to wait for anyone to acknowledge you or have to wait for anyone to make you a priority. You begin to do that yourself, which is so significant when it comes to your overall development and growth. And you want to feel well. You want to feel clear, focused, and to be able to manifest a life you truly love. You want to show up in your life and you really want to stretch your stuff, you know? I mean, seriously, we are now at a stage in our lives, we all should be right now, where it is really time for us to truly live our lives, show up in our lives. We play so many roles to so many people. We're wives, we're mothers, we're daughters, we're sisters, we're employees, we're neighbors, we're co-workers, we're uh, uh, church members. We have a lot of different roles that we play, and that's fine. But we really want to excel in the main, main role that we were created to be, ourselves. We want to be the stars of our lives instead of making everything around us the stars. We want to be the stars of our lives. But sometimes we need a little help to do that, a little nudge, a little push, a little encouragement, a little support, a little motivation. Sometimes we need that. It's really difficult to do it by ourselves. We can read blogs and self-help books and, you know, watch webinars like these, all that stuff. You're like, yes, 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 I can do it. And the next morning it's like, mm, uh. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do it later and, and it doesn't but, happen. And Linus and I have been through that. Mm -hmm. You know, That's we've been thing. through that and we really move through the things that were really difficult for each of us in our lives to begin to create a life that we love and of course shared it in our own ways with the women around us and you know you don't have to do it by yourself no you're gonna do it yourself yeah, right. you don't have yeah. to do it by yourself it took me personally years and years and years and years and years to come to peace and wholeness with my life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now we're imparting all this wisdom with you that it isn't going to take very long no. It's just a matter of practice. Practice makes perfect and a little bit of support and encouragement. That's why we decided to create the Emergence Encounter Masterclass, which starts on June 30th. We are so excited about this class. And, you know, it's going to include uh, four sessions, one a week for four weeks, starting again on June 30th. The next will be July 7th, July 14th, and then July 21st. We'll start at uh, 4 p.m. in the afternoon, Pacific Standard, and then 7 p.m. Eastern Standard on the East Coast. And this will also include downloads for each session. You will have specific tips and additional information that will not even be covered in the classes. And you will have a recording of each session. So if for any reason, let's say you have set up a vacation for, for a week, that you can still get the recordings of any session that perhaps you may be missing. And also, 
you'll be getting a membership into the Emergence Encounter Facebook group, which we're really excited about because you'll have people that are like-minded with you, that you can you know, communicate with each other, where Linus and I will come in and give you additional tips and support as you are unfolding and emerging into the life you really want to have. And there will also be discounts for future events. Oh, and I forgot the most important thing. You'll be getting an emergence encounter blueprint or document that is going to support you in designing how you want your life to be now. And so it's going to be a support tool for you to really put it into action put it on paper, start to design, well, how do I really want my life to be? What actions am I going to take? And find a way to be accountable with yourself so that you become self-reliant, self-responsible, a powerful manifester of everything you choose in your life. And, you know, take the time to invest in yourself. Um, yes, the hair, the nails, the clothes and all that are great, but we found out over the last few months that actually, while all of that is fine and good, and good, it's our emotional health and our overall wellness, body wellness, our spiritual wellness. Those are the things that we really need. The clothes and the hair only take us so far. We really need the meats and potatoes. This, this, we're in interesting times right now. So now is the time, really, now is the time to fortify your mind, your body, and your spirit by finding out more ways to be well, by finding out how to stay spiritually uplifted even during these crazy times and how to control your mind in terms of the thoughts that you're thinking and, and how to manifest basically a life that you love and still do that and be well at the same time. When um, Shelly and I got together to put this course together, one of the things that I told her was, there's a lot of great personal development courses out there. They're very good, but I'm always concerned about the wellness component because if you're not feeling well in your body, there's no amount of courses that are going to make you succeed as much as if you were feeling well. If you're feeling better, then you're going to do better. But when you're not feeling that great, you might still be somewhat successful. But what I would like to do in my life, and I'm sure everyone would like to in your life, is to go beyond and above what it is that you think you would like to do or think you would like to have. I want to have a life of my dreams. I don't think I'm any different than anyone else. And I believe that it's attainable. But it does take some investment in myself, some focus, and some help. Some help, you know, mentorship, um, some coaching along the way. Uh, the, the growth that I've done, I have not done by myself. I have had coaches that have helped me. I've had mentors that have helped me. I've, had, You know, friends are great, but I mean, really having someone that's trained in the things that I know that I need to accomplish. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. I am a holistic living and wellness coach. I'm certified, but I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to the things that it takes, especially as you age, to stay well in your mind, body, and spirit. Shelly's been working with uh, women for over 30 years. She has heard it all. There's nothing that you could probably say to shock her. And she does a beautiful job of helping you to feel comfortable as you move forward and really doing some of that deep work that really, believe me, you haven't done. You may have done some stuff on the surface, but what we're talking about can help you actually change your energies and to help you be much more successful as a manifester. So, and also very importantly, Linus, and you and I both came to this same conclusion, it's essential to create permanent change for your life. Mm -hmm. It isn't just enough to feel good for a little while mm -hmm. and then go back into the same old stuff again. No, we're here to support you and making the changes so that the changes become permanent. Absolutely. So we have, again, the Emergence Encounter class, master Ooh, class. In there. I'm sorry, it's something happened to the slideshow there for a minute. It got stuck over one. Yeah. But I want to reiterate that it does start on the 30th. It does go for four sessions. Uh, and, uh, and then it does include a recording, uploads, uh, the Facebook group, 
uh, your blueprint, your document that is going to help you shape your life and also additional discounts for events that we'll be doing in the future. In the sessions, we're going to be covering letting go of limitations and blocks to manifest the life that you love. We're going to be talking about midlife mojo, getting your energy, your motivation back, focusing on maybe those balancing those hormones, maybe dropping a few pounds. Uh, we're going to also be talking about awakening your creativity and your energy. And at the very last session, we'll be talking about creating that blueprint, that emergence blueprint that is just for you based upon your needs and your goals and those specific things that you know you need to work on. So we have, so, go ahead, Shelly, go ahead. Special offer. We have a, an incredible offer for those of you who have participated today. Normally, the price of the Emergence Encounter Masterclass would be $400. But today, for all of you who have participated, we are going to be offering you a special price of $197. And then to register, simply go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash register E masterclass. And again, just to go over it again, it's um, four sessions, one per week, downloads for each session. You get a recording for each session, membership in the Emergence Encounter Facebook group, an Emergence Encounter blueprint that is designed especially for you, and discounts on future events. All for only $197. All you have to do is go to bit.ly slash register e masterclass to register today to get that fantastic price.